Hi angel besties, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Rachel. Welcome to today's reading vlog. I'm super excited for today's video as you can see by the title. In this vlog, I'm going to be reading three fantasy romances recommended by you all. So essentially what I have done is a few weeks ago, I asked over on my Instagram stories for you all to suggest a book for me to read for this video. So this can either be a fantasy romance that you've read, you really enjoyed, you want to see me read it in a vlog, or maybe it is a book that you've had your eye on, but you want to see me read it, vet it out for you. And whatever the three most recommended books were, the books that I saw come up the most in your answers, I decided to read for this vlog. So I'm really, really excited about today's video. I am coming to you partway through this vlog, so I'm gonna keep this brief. I don't wanna spoil anything, but I will say there are some very high highs and some very low lows in this vlog. So I think it's gonna be really fun for you all. I'm excited for you to see my reactions to the books that y'all picked. And it was just really fun. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted an answer. I definitely want to continue to do this. I really like doing these vlogs and reading your suggestions. And you guys have just recommended so many books to me. Some that I was familiar with, but a lot that I've never heard of. So I am eternally grateful for you all. So that is going to be it for me. Let's go back to past Rachel and get into the vlog portion of this video. Hi friends, how are we? It is time for my first reading check-in for the first book of this reading vlog. Can I just say, it feels so good to be sitting down and doing like a proper reading vlog check-in. I feel like I have not done just like my regular classic reading vlog type of video in so long. It probably hasn't even been that long. It's probably been like a month, but I'm just dramatic and it feels like it's been forever. And I really missed this and I'm just so excited. And I hope you guys are just like ready for reading vlogs on reading vlogs on reading vlogs. That's just gonna be the vibe from now until forever or until you guys get sick of me because I just, I just love this. I just love sitting down and talking about my silly little fantasy books. So I'm really happy to be here doing my first check-in for this video and can I just say? Okay, you know what? I'm always like, mm, I'm not gonna get too excited because when I start a book and I get excited by it, it always ends up disappointing me. Screw that. I am excited about Heavenly Bodies, you guys. I am literally on page 105. This book is 600 pages. So I have plenty of uh, room to be disappointed here, but this is such a strong start, I have to say. I am, I think that's like 17% of the way done with this book and I am just kicking my feet having a great time. The escapism is on 11 in this book, you guys. There is something about this author's writing that is so, it just transports you. Instantly, I got into the book. I feel like the action kicks off right away. There's a lot that happens in the beginning. Kind of just have to be along for the ride and get into the story, but I'm obsessed with the characters. I think the world is interesting and the romance is so good so far. It's right up my alley. It is perfect. I'm really excited by this book. So a very brief description. Our main character's name is Alara. She is from the kingdom Asteria, I believe, which kind of has a dark vibe to it. The people there have shadow magic and dream magic and illusion magic and things go awry in her kingdom and it ends up kind of getting taken over by this star, which are basically gods. And so she has to flee her kingdom, go to a nearby a neighboring country. And in this kingdom, their whole thing is like light and sun. It's called Helios and everyone has light magic and fire magic there. And essentially she seeks asylum in that country and the king there says, yes, you know, we'll take you in, but we need you to become the weapon that you are just in case war ends up coming to our country because you're a hot commodity and the gods are probably going to find out that you're here and we just want to be ready. Our girl Alara has very special magic skills. She is a very, very powerful person, but she has not accessed her full power her whole life. Her parents did not really encourage that. So she is going to be trained by the king's son, Enzo, and um, you guessed it, that's our love interest. The banter between these two is top tier. Chef's kiss, amazing, so much fun. He has like fire and light magic. She has like dark shadow magic. So I love that two kind of opposing magic systems. They're both powerful within their own right. They both have their own personalities. They both have reasons to kind of not trust one another, but uh, they can't resist because they're so into each other. Oh my God, I'm just having such a good time. Another thing that is really working for me with this book is this author's writing style. She is so descriptive with what the palace looks like, what the you know markets look like, what the kingdom smells like. I love that, okay? I eat that up. I love super, super descriptive sights, sounds, and smells in fantasy novels. It's really important to me. I think that that just gets you into the book so much more and really helps you transport to that world. And that's why I think I'm just having such a wonderful escapism moment with this book because the author is doing a really good job at describing everything and it just makes things a lot more fun. I'm very visual, so I'm just really liking 
looking at the way that this author is writing. But as of right now, we've had a lot of training sequences, which I love, and we've had a lot of banter and tension, and I think there are a lot of secrets to be discovered between these two, and I'm excited by it. I think that these stars slash gods are interesting. I'll be kind of curious to see what their role is going to be. And as I said, I'm on page 105, and this is an almost 600 page book. So much has happened already. I have no idea what's going to go on in this part of the book. I'm honestly scared. A lot has happened. There's prophecies. There is untapped magic potential that still needs to be discovered. I'm here for it. So I'm so excited that so many people recommended this book for me to read for this vlog. I was hoping you guys would, and you really, really delivered. And so far, this book is delivering as well. So that is all great. I'm really wanting to make some good progress on this book today. I am going to be on Sahar's channel for the Children of Fallen Gods live show, and then I'm going out to dinner. But when I get back, hopefully I will be able to get some reading done. If not, I want to read a little bit more in the morning. But I'm really liking this. I'm having very, very good feelings. I want to get a little bit into this book, uh, a little farther into this book before I talk to you guys again, maybe get to the 50% mark to really get into the story. But as of right now, we have the best vibes. So that's going to be the update for now. I will talk to you guys once I'm a little bit further into this and fingers crossed, it's still going well. Hello besties, happy Friday. So I need to talk to you guys because I'm already 50% of the way done with Heavenly Bodies and I'm having trouble putting it down, to be honest with you. So I knew I wanted to check in. I am so happy that this was the most requested book that I read for this vlog because I'm loving it, you guys. I'm having such a good time, so much fun, such an interesting plot, such an interesting world. I have like a ton of thoughts that I wanna hit and I'm probably gonna be a little all over the place, so I apologize, but Number one, something that I've been thinking throughout this book is it is really, I think, super impressive that this is this author's debut novel. We have a very, very interesting celestial setting and characters and different lands that get described and all of these different magical powers. And I just think it's really intriguing. I think it's like at a level that is understandable and definitely accessible, but still keeps me really intrigued about what this whole world has to offer. And so I'm really excited by that. I hope that we get to explore more and see other lands and other people people and kind of what all their powers are. Different kingdoms and different uh, celestial beings have different powers depending on where they're from. I really like that. I think that that's really cool. And I think our characters are developing really well. I love Alara and Enzo's dynamic. It is so good. It is so tension filled. I also like their differing magic. I touched on this in the last clip, but I just love that Alara is our shadow mommy. You know, like I feel like in fantasy romance, we have all of our shadow daddies, right? We have Asriel, we have Zayden, but we are going to add a Laura to that list and she is the first shadow mommy and I absolutely love that because her power is really fascinating it's really interesting she is still learning a lot about it and I'm excited to see what she can do I still feel like there's more untapped potential there and I'm really excited to see where that goes and then Enzo god he is so so wonderful one of my biggest pet peeves in fantasy romance is when the love interest is essentially just a prop and you know, maybe he gets described a certain way, but then when it actually comes down to it, he's not that interesting or he's not that well-rounded of a character. And I think that Enzo proves to be an interesting character. He stands on his own. He's not just there to be our main character's love interest, which I really, really like. Like that's just so, so important to me because I just think it makes the plot all the more richer. And we have a lot of amazing side characters. And one of the aspects of this book that is really, really gripping me. And so when the romance isn't, you know, going on or whatever, or there's not, you know, a main scene with our two main characters is we have all of these really fascinating stars, which are kind of like gods, but I'm just gonna keep referring to them as the stars because that's what they're called in this book. So there's 13 of them and they are represented by the like zodiac signs. There's 13 because Gemini is the twins. So there's Gem and Eli, I think are their names, but there's all of these different stars. They all have different magical powers and different strengths and different things that they represent. And their dynamics with one another is so interesting. There's like this political aspect and like alliances are a little bit unknown, things are very very blurry and I really like that and I'm so excited to see what that role with you know Alara and Enzo and just the fate of everything like where that goes because they are like they're so they're these all-powerful beings and most of the time from what we've heard they really don't care about the lives of mortals but they're now getting more and more involved it's just really cool it's really fascinating I think that it is a good addition to this book because it's not just about the romance there is actually kind of a lot of interesting political things happening and these gods are all very different and I think represent and do different things. And I just, I'm really liking that. I'm just like totally geeking out on that whole thing. I really don't have any complaints about the book like so far. I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm having so much fun. I think the dialogue is fun. I really like our other side characters like Leo and Marissa and Isra. This is going super good. I cannot wait to see what happens. Oh, one more thing. I'm all over the place, but 
I honestly don't know what is gonna happen in the second half of the book. Like, I feel like I can predict things a lot of times, but something that I thought was going to happen in this book, something I thought would probably happen towards the end, kind of happened in the middle of the book. So now I'm like, okay, so now what are we gonna do? So I'm really excited about that. I just think that there is a lot more to uncover here and I cannot wait to see how this author ends this book. I probably won't check in with you all until I finish this book. I wanted to try to read a big chunk tonight. I don't think I'll finish it, but Sean and I are about to start the lovely process of finding where we're gonna be moving because our lease is up in the fall. So we're gonna be kind of looking at some houses tonight. So kind of a crazy process. Obviously we're gonna spend several hours doing that. And then I think we might go shopping after, I don't know, but tonight is busy, needless to say. So I might try to read a little bit when I get back and then I'll definitely read some tomorrow morning before I film my video that I'm gonna film tomorrow morning. So I just wanna say I'm having a great time. I want to recommend this to you already, but I'm gonna hold off until I finish it. I will definitely talk to you guys tomorrow once I have finished this and I'll let you know what I start next. How are we? So it is Sunday today. The last time we talked was Friday. Sean and I went and ran some errands and I did pick up a couple books while we were out. So I will show you guys those in a second. I also got a little bit of book mail, but I'm really, really excited because I finished Heavenly Bodies last night and I am just... I'm in love. I am absolutely in love. If you have been keeping up with my channel, you may know that I have not given out a five star in maybe I think like a month and a half, which is not that long, but I have been very disappointed by a lot of the books that I've picked up in that time because I always shoot for books that I think I'm gonna give really high ratings to. And the books that I've been reading lately, it just have not been hitting. Well, I'm so, so happy to say that I gave this five stars. You guys, okay. This is one of my favorite fantasy romances that I have ever read. This was fantastic. The writing was really great really interesting and unique world building. The whole celestial theme, really cool, really worked for me. The ending of this book is crazy. The ending of this book, like the last 25%, it reminded me of, you know, when you read a Sarah J Mass book and the last like 100 pages are just absolute mayhem. That's what happened here. But like, it reminded me of that in the absolute best way. It was really, really great. The ending, I just, I can't, I'm sorry. I'm so all over the place, but truly the ending was maybe like my favorite part of the entire book. And I loved the whole book. There was a lot of world building that happened kind of in those last 100, 150 pages that I thought was really cool. It has opened up this series into a whole new direction that I am very, very excited about. And the romance was super well done. The romance was at the forefront of the story the entire time. I know sometimes with fantasy romance, there can be a little bit of an imbalance and, you know, depending on how it's written that doesn't bother me but the romance really really shown throughout the entire book our two main characters are so fantastic really well written really rounded out characters they are interesting on their own they're fantastic as a couple the spice was like very very good this works for me on every single level this is a new favorite fantasy romance so my friend hannah at hannah's recent reads we love her she read this book and she's the one who put it onto my radar and so i saw her reading it in a vlog and i was like oh yeah i'll pick that up because she really liked it and then when i did my instagram story after asking like, oh, you know, like what, what book should I read for this uh, subscriber recommendation video? A lot of people recommended Heavenly Bodies. So I was very happy and I knew I wanted to read this book this month. So it all worked out. And something that Hannah said in her vlog, that I think really bears worth repeating is how is this book not everywhere? How is this book not blowing up? This book, I feel like truly, I'm generalizing, but I feel like it hits all of the classic tropes and aspects of fantasy romance of those books that I see like blow up on BookTok and Bookstagram and all of that. I just like this book needs and deserves so much hype. And I really, really hope that you guys will read this book because I think if you like similar books to me, I think that you will really, really enjoy this. I have absolutely zero critique of this book. It was so strong. It was so fun too. Like there was humor, there was interesting characters, there was banter, there was some found family. There was just like really, really beautiful imagery in this book and the plot is going in a really cool direction. So I just, I cannot believe that this book is not blowing up more, but I really hope that you will pick this up if it sounds good to you. It's celestial. We have all of these gods, all of these stars. We have a lot of lore. We have just really, really fun characters that you want to root for and interesting magic systems. Like I, yeah, it blows my mind that this book is not like more talked about. I don't know, maybe it is and I just haven't seen it as much, but 
please read this book. Like I am urging you to please read this because it is so freaking good. Enzo and Alara are really fantastic characters. I cannot wait to pick up book two. I think I'm definitely gonna pick that up in September because I need to know where things are gonna go. The ending is wild in the best way. Whenever I love a book, I have such a hard time depicting like in an organized way why I love the book. But you guys, this was so good. This was so fun. This is one of the best books that I've read this year. I just need you all to read it. Okay, so please read this. Let me know what you think because I truly think this is one of the strongest fantasy romances that I have read all year. I really loved it. It's the first book in, I think it's gonna be a trilogy. The second book is out. The third book I think is coming out in the fall, but it is on Kindle Unlimited as well. So go read it, please. Oh my God. I'm so happy that I read this. Thank you all for recommending that I read this for this video because I really wanted to pick it up and I was not disappointed. And this is my first five star in quite a while and it is well deserved. So we are starting off this video with a bang, which is so fantastic. So let me go through the book mail and like little book shopping that I did first. And then I'll talk about the next book that I'm gonna read for this video. So number one, I have this package. So I got, oh my God, so beautiful. So I got the UK paperback edition of the Night Circus. My friend Lachlan recently got this and I just think it's really beautiful. And I really wanted a paperback edition of this book. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I love it so much. I'm planning to reread it during the holiday season. This is not a Christmassy book in any way, but because I read it for the first time at Christmas time, it just gives me that imagery and it's really just magical and whimsical. So I'm definitely going to do a reread and I wanted a paperback just because it's, you know, easier to hold, easier to read. This is so beautiful. I love the spine. Really, really stunning. So super excited about that. All right. The next one is from Amazon. So this is Blood and Steel by Helen Schur. I wanna say, sure. I apologize if I'm uh, mispronouncing the name, but this is a fantasy romance. I believe this came out semi-recently, but I picked this up because this was marketed to me as if Akasif is your favorite book in the Akatar series, you need to read this. That got me. You guys know, you guys know that that was always gonna get me, right? So when I heard that, I was like, okay, yes, absolutely. It's enemies to lovers and there's a ton of training sequences and it's supposed to be a little bit darker. I don't know, I'm really excited. I wanna pick this up soon. Maybe I'll read this next week. I'm really excited about this and that, uh, recommendation. I don't know. I was just like, I can't, I can't not pick it up now. And I've just seen really, really glowing reviews of this book thus far. The cover is really cool. So yeah, I'm excited about this. All right. So then the other night when Sean and I went, we looked at some houses, we went to dinner and then we went shopping. We went to Barnes, Lush, and Sephora, the big three. That's my big three. Barnes, Lush, and Sephora absolutely are my big three. And I have been looking for one book in particular for a while now. And I can't believe how hard it was to find this book. But when I went to Minneapolis to visit the besties, I knew that we were gonna go book shopping. And one of the books that I really wanted to get while I was there was Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I believe that the latest book in that series, or like, I don't know if it's all one series or like kind of separate connected series, but Pierce Brown's latest book has come out recently. So I've just seen so much buzz about that series as a whole. And I've always wanted to read that series. I was like, you know what? I need to pick up Red Rising. And so when we went to Minneapolis, I was searching all over for Red Rising. And I swear to God, you would think that this was like the Sprayed Edges edition of Fourth Wing, not a single bookstore that we went to in Minneapolis had a copy of Red Rising, which is so crazy because I feel like I see that book everywhere. It's so popular. So I wasn't able to get it when I was in Minneapolis. And then Sean and I went to a Barnes and then a Half Price Books and neither of them had it. So I was like, what is going on? Why is Red Rising such a coveted book? And then on the way home, we went to another Barnes and I was able to find it. So I picked up a copy of Red Rising, which I'm very excited about. Number one, I literally thought that this book was going to be 700 pages. It's pretty short. I know that the books get longer as the series goes on, but I'm really excited to read this. I think after I finish this vlog, I'm going to start another vlog immediately and Red Rising will be the first book that I read because I'm just super excited about it. I'm also going to start like weekly vlogging on a regular basis. I'm putting that out into the universe now so that it happens. I think that's just like what I want to start doing, just vlogging 99% of what I'm reading. And so I will be attempting to put out a vlog um, every single week. So if one doesn't come out exactly one week from the last time I put out a vlog, just know that it's coming and I'm always working on it. So I'm going to be vlogging a lot, lot more and and this will definitely be, I think, in my next vlog because I'm super excited by this. I've heard really good things. I hope that I love it and I'm really excited to dive into this whole series. And then there was a sale going on. So, you know, I had to pick up a few other things. So I got The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This is an adult fantasy and I've just heard really raving things. And then I picked up 
The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas. So this is a fantasy romance, enemies to lovers, begrudging allies, main character has some hidden power, you know the drill. I have also heard good things about this book. It's just kind of been on my radar of, oh, I should pick that book up sometime. And I saw it and it was buy one, get one 50% off. So I wanted to pick this up. I also think it's really pretty. I love the white spine. I think it's really gorgeous. So I'm excited to read this and hopefully I like this. Alrighty, so the next book that I'm going to be reading for this subscriber recommended fantasy romances reading vlog. That is not gonna be the name, but you know, that kind of hits all the boxes. The second most requested book from my little poll that I did on Instagram was The Stars Are Dying by Chloe C. Peña Ronda. So multiple people suggested this one. I bought this book recently, so I was like, yep, I'm gonna pick this up. And this is another celestial fantasy romance. Seems to be a theme lately. I really like celestial themes in books, I'm realizing. I did start this just last night, just like right before I went to bed, and I only read the prologue and chapter one. I'm on page 23, so really, I'm not gonna talk about too much of what I think of this book yet, but I just want to say now I'm finding the writing style to be, I feel like there's so many words that are being said in a sentence that could be very simple to make more sense. Like I think the sentence structure so far in what I have read has been, it's been weird or like, I'm just not, it's like I'm trying to latch on to what is being said and what is being described and I can't for some reason. I don't know why, but I'm not gonna judge harshly at this point because literally I'm on chapter one. Who knows, this could be my best book of the year. But I just am finding the intro of this book a little bit clunky, I don't really know. But um, I really wanna love this because look at how beautiful this book is, oh my God. But what I do know about this book is our main character lives in a world where there are vampires roaming the lands, killing off people. She is going to be competing, I believe, in a set of trials run by this tyrannical king. And the prize is essentially 100 years of safety from vampires, but there is this this mysterious dark haired guy who she runs into and he's got some secrets and I you know I don't really know the stars are involved somehow and that is where things are gonna go I love there's some art in the book which I absolutely love let me show you guys okay so there is that which I believe this is a scene that happens in chapter one that I read really really pretty book so hopefully I like it but here's the plan for today I am actually about to sit down and film a video I'm going to be filming a every single book on my physical TBR video I've got you know, quite a video ahead of me right now, looking at the pile of all of my books on my physical CBR and it's terrifying. So I'm gonna film that. And then later today we are going boating because it's really, really nice out. It is the end of summer in Seattle, like a month from now, it's gonna drop probably like 20 degrees and the sun will be less frequent. So we are trying to hold on to it as much as we can. I am going to attempt to read either later tonight or if I finish my video and I've got a few hours before Sean is home and we go boating, I will do that. But if not, um, I'll just check in with you guys the next time I have a reading update. I'll either try to read a good chunk today or tomorrow and then let you all know what I think. But I'm excited about this. I really hope that like once I kind of get into the groove of things, I am liking this uh, more. I'm not even gonna put a judgment on it. I just, I just wanted to say that now to kind of make note that the writing style is a little bit weird when I first got into it. Sometimes it does take me a little bit of time to adjust to a book. So that is all I have to say for now, my loves, but heavenly bodies, where are you? Obsessed read this. You have to read this now. Like it's, it's required. It's your homework. You must read this. If you love fantasy romance, if you and I have similar taste, I need you to pick this up because this is fantastic. And it was so much fun and it just hits all the boxes. It really does. Like I'm going to be shouting this book uh, from the rooftop. I will be spreading the good word of heavenly bodies from now on. That is my mission for the rest of the year. Please read this because it was really, really fun and really cute and spicy and interesting. It's got it all. It's got it all. Okay. That is going to be enough. I will talk to you guys at some point once I have an update for this. besties. How are we? Happy Wednesday. I am here for another very interesting check-in. So the last time we talked, I had just got to uh, chapter two in this book. I had only read the prologue and chapter one. I am now coming to you a couple days later, having finished The Stars Are Dying. And the reason why I did not check in midway like I normally do is because reading this book genuinely was a chore. I had to kind of convince myself to not DNF it about four or five times and I just I, I couldn't even give a midway point check-in because I just wanted to finish the book. My feelings never changed on it. I wanted to see if maybe they would change and then I would maybe give kind of a more like 
nuanced reading check-in, but I did not enjoy this book at all, and so I just didn't really have much to say midway through that I can't just kind of say now because my feelings honestly stayed the same pretty much throughout the entire read. So unfortunately, The Stars Are Dying was a major dud for me. There are multiple things about this book that I did not enjoy. I don't know if there's anything like super positive. There isn't anything that I like loved about it, but maybe I can think of a couple things that I liked um, as I'm going through. But I want to talk about this book and just why this did not work for me. These are just, you know, my opinions, my thoughts. It was very, very difficult to push through this book. And I just found the entire thing to be a very big disappointment because I was very excited by the idea of what this book could have been. I just did not like the execution at all. So let's go into the issues that I had with it. So number one, the last thing that I talked about with you all was the writing was throwing me off a little bit. That did not change. In fact, it got worse. I found this writing to be pretty convoluted. I found it trying to say a whole lot with actually not really making much sense. I was extremely confused throughout a majority of this book. I was rereading sentences like multiple times and I was like, okay, am I just like, like what is wrong with me? Like why am I not grasping what is being said? What is happening? What is going on? And I looked at a lot of good reads reviews after I finished this book because I was just like, okay, like was this just a me thing? I saw very frequently people talking about the writing being very confusing. So, you know, I'm glad I'm not alone in that. But yeah, that is probably I think the biggest crime of this book is the writing is so confusing. I was rereading paragraphs. I was trying to decipher sentences over and over again because I did not get what was going on. It was very weird. It was a very, very strange reading experience. And there was that, you know, purple prose, that flowery writing, which I'm a fan of. Okay, I love very, very flowery, beautiful, every other line is quotable type of writing, but the thing with that is there has to be this very good balance of yes, the writing can be very pretty, but it still needs to be executing something. We still need to be getting from point A to point B. It has to make sense. I truly feel like the opposite was happening. We weren't executing anything. It was very confusing. I didn't vibe with it at all. I found it extremely hard to get into the story. I felt myself constantly taken out of it because I was like, wait, what's happening? I don't, <laughs> I don't get what's going on. And so that was something that was really hard. And that is kind of what made a lot of this book a bit of a chore because getting through some of these chapters was just really hard because I, I just did not like the writing. I thought it was, you know, flowery writing for flowery sake. You can't sacrifice storytelling for pretty writing. And I think that that happened here. I can see like what was attempted to be done, but I just don't think that it worked because I do think that the plot overall suffered and the characters suffered, development, all of that suffered because of how this was written. And it is weird because I've read one other book by this author in Air Comes to Rise and I didn't really love that book either, but the writing was very different and the writing was better. It was much more clear, much simpler, Simpler. It's just interesting. This feels like a different author, honestly. That was very disappointing for me. And truly that just kept going on. I will say as the book went on, like past the 50% point, things were better, but first half of the book was very, very difficult to get through. And honestly, like throughout the whole thing, I just was not a fan of the writing style. Number two is going to be the relationship between Knight and Astraea. <sighs> Knight, I, I did not really like Knight as a love interest. <laughs> he, he was so confusing. I have finished the book and I still have a lot of questions and I don't feel that he was ever a very, compelling character and there is a lot of mystery surrounding him and Astraea and you know that's for a reason obviously we have plot reveals we're not going to fully explain everything about these characters and their dynamic but you can still have a well-rounded character you can still have interesting conversations you can still have the intrigue of who is this mystery man who shows up in Astraea's room randomly or in her head he'll be talking to her so he would like randomly show up or talk to her it reminded me so much of in uh, New Moon I'm gonna make a Twilight reference in New Moon when after Edward had left her, Bella would like do dangerous things to get some type of like apparition kind of of Edward in front of her. It gave me those vibes for sure. It wasn't just when Australia was like doing dangerous things. It would be like randomly and their whole setup of their relationship was very, very confusing and he would just kind of appear and as the book went on, obviously we got to see a lot more of them, but still the main thing that I did not like with their relationship is there was little to no development. Night was a character and a love interest that we were just supposed to be on board for like immediately. Like, who is this man? Like, I just kept thinking that to myself. Like, who is he? Like, I don't, I don't get it. And he would be saying very big quote proclamations about like, I'm paraphrasing, this is not the quote at all, but just being like, you and I are connected and we both have this darkness, but you know, I crave the darkness within you just like you do with me. Like so early on and it was just not, 
I didn't buy it. And I feel like it was one of those things where there are so many fantasy romances where there are these quotable lines. We see them in like reels in like Akamath. There's the quote of um, you are my salvation and things like that. Like you guys know what I mean, right? Like in fantasy romance, there'll be those like hit quotes that like really grip people's attention. Those work if they are earned. Those types of things, those types of, and it wasn't, he wasn't like saying that he loves her. It wasn't like that, but it was just, I felt like we were trying to make him seem so moody and interesting and saying all these romantic things to her. And I'm like, what is going on? And even Estrella was like, what is going on? <laughs> but she was still like kind of into it. I don't know. I didn't like that. It was so underdeveloped. It was very, very weird to me. And I just feel like, you know, we're trying to get these snapshot moments that can work in a fantasy romance that is, I think, just put together in a better way. So I hope that makes sense. I just, I think that we were supposed to love him instantly and he and Astraea had this like interesting dynamic, I guess, but I just, I didn't like the way that it was done. I did not like the way the romance was done. There were obviously reveals and stuff at the end, uh, but there, I mean, I still have questions. I still have questions about their dynamic, but anyway. So that was something that I didn't like. And then Astraea as a main character, she's not, bad. She's just not like my cup of tea. She is very naive. Obviously she doesn't know what happened her entire life up until the last five years. She's confused. We're confused. Everyone's confused in this book. So I get that and I understand we have to kind of like keep things hidden because she's learning about herself as we are, but I just think that there are better ways to do it than what was done in this book. So I didn't like that. And I truly almost DNF'd this, I think four or five times. If I was not doing this for a reading vlog, I absolutely would have DNF'd it like at, I don't know, 150 pages maybe. I did not enjoy my time with this and it really, really sucks and I'm sorry. I don't wanna be super harsh or anything like that, but I just, I'm frustrated because there is like potential and I just think that this was not well done. The idea is there, I get that. The characters could be interesting. This weird dynamic they have in the beginning where he's appearing out of nowhere and we don't know where he comes from. We don't really know what he is. We don't know what's going on. All of that could have been more interesting and better if maybe they had had better banter, if he had been a little bit more enjoyable to read about. Yeah, I just, I found both of them kind of boring, Astraea and Knight. I wanted so badly for that feeling of like, okay, I'm actually liking this. I'm into this to get there, but multiple things prevented that from happening. The writing mostly, the writing was just very difficult to get a hold of. I felt like I was just trying to find my footing constantly with the writing. And if I'm having to reread lines, it's, it's over. It's over, babe. Like, I can't do it. I cannot do it. So I gave this book two stars. I don't like to give books one star unless I am like very upset at the book or like offended or something very inappropriate. You know, normally I'm DNFing at that point, right? I will say there was a friendship dynamic in this book that I really liked and I thought that that was like fun and well done and there was like cute scenes with them. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, I don't know. I guess that's what the two stars is for. But yeah, I, I did not enjoy this book. I don't recommend it. I'm very disappointed, but I just think this author might just not be for me because her other book, An Air Comes to Rise, I gave it three stars, but I'm not gonna continue on with the series because it's too similar to Throne of Glass for me. And then this just wasn't for me. So didn't work, maybe it'll work for you, but it did not work for me. It was exhausting to read this, honestly. Like I was really, really not enjoying my time with it. And I'm really sad about that, but that is showbiz. So the stars are dying two stars. So crazy. I went from Heavenly Bodies, which is like a five star, amazing, probably going to be on my best books of the year to The Stars Are Dying, two stars, probably going to be on my worst books of the year. What a time. So much duality happening. Okay. So the very last book that I'm going to be reading for this fantasy romance subscriber recommendations vlog, Court of Blood and Bindings by Lisette Marshall. So this is a fey fantasy romance. It's kind of all I know right now. I did just start reading the first chapter. Right when I finished this, I was like, I need to read literally anything. I'll read the back of a shampoo bottle at this point, I need to feel something because this was draining. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna open up Court of Blood and Bindings on my Kindle, cause that's how I'll be reading it and just see how the writing goes and all of that. So I've read like half of the first chapter. It's really fun so far. The writing is absolutely nothing like this. And I think it's gonna be a good time. I am excited. I will take anything at this point. I just need to feel happy again. <laughs> This book drained me. I'm sorry to be so dramatic, but I did not enjoy reading this and reading, you know, like that's just the thing. 
is reading is my my greatest love, my greatest passion. And so when I'm reading something that just is taking the life out of me, it really sucks. So I'm excited to start this book and I hope that I like it. I hope it's a fun time. So I'm going to be listening to the audiobook tonight. I think I'm just gonna like clean, go to the gym, hang out. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be very busy tomorrow. So I don't think I'm gonna get a lot of reading done tomorrow. And then Friday, I'm busy as well. One of my best friends is coming to visit. So she's gonna come, we're gonna hang out, get dinner. She's gonna sleep over. It'll be a great time. So I'll probably get a lot of reading done maybe like Friday during the day and then on Saturday. And I'm excited. I'm excited to check in with you all about this book. I will definitely let you know my thoughts midway through. And yeah, that's gonna be it for now. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hello, besties. How are we? Happy Saturday. So the last time I talked to you all, I had just started. And by just started, I mean like I got 12 pages into Court of Blood and Bindings. My friend came over, which was really amazing. We had dinner together last night. She slept over. It was a grand old time. We listened to Taylor Swift. It was a perfect evening. She left this morning and I've just been kind of like picking up the house and listening to the audiobook for Court of Blood and Binding. So I'm now 40% of the way into the book. And I have to say, this book is really fun. I do have a couple critiques, but overall I'm having a really good time. The premise of this book is our main character's name is Emmeline. She is a human girl living in a village. We have fey kingdoms nearby as you do. And Emmeline has a bit of a secret. She has some bit of magic. It's really unknown to her and her and her parents have really tried to keep it under wraps because if the other humans in her village find out that she has magic. That could be a little bit problematic for her. It could be an issue. So she's kind of just tried to live her life containing this magic and being a normal girl. Well, one day chaos ensues in her kingdom and the notorious Fey warrior known as the Silent Death ends up kidnapping Emmeline and taking her to the Fey Isles in the Crimson Court. The Silent Death is of course very handsome because why wouldn't he be? And the reason he's known as the Silent Death is because he's a brutal killer, but he has also been cursed by the overruling Fey queen known as the Mother to not speak. But that has not stopped him from continuing on his quest for vengeance and hope to overthrow the powers that be. And that is the reason that he is very interested in Emmeline because her specific magic that she has, that she accidentally shows him, is very important to him and could really be significant in his quest. So Emmeline and then Creon, that's the silent death, that's his actual name, they do start out a bit as enemies to lovers. They definitely have reason to dislike each other. Emmeline obviously was kidnapped by him, so she's not a fan. And Creon, I think, just finds Emmeline's general disposition a little bit annoying, but I also think he finds it a little bit charming. And what I love about their dynamic is Creon is our classic tortured broody hero. He has been through so much. He has seen so much death and destruction that he's kind of all numb to everything. And he's really a one track minded character, which is a character that I really like. The ones that are just so hell bent on their goal that they don't really notice or pay attention to the things around them. I think those characters are really interesting and he's always been this way until Emmeline has come into his life now. And even though she is helping him with his goal in life and his biggest quest, he is also finally having someone care to communicate with him. She's teaching him sign language. They're kind of learning how to communicate with one another. And he has never really had the pleasure of someone's company. He's never really had just someone to talk to, someone to kind of laugh at. And I think that Emmeline really amuses him and he's just very kind of taken aback by her. And so I think that their dynamic is really, really cute. I'm really liking the two of them together. As far as like criticisms of the book, it's just, it's one of those things where like, this is not a fantasy romance that has a ton of amazing world building. There's a little bit here and there. We have a magic system that is rooted in color, which I do think is interesting and it's simple enough to follow. So I like that. I feel definitely connected to the story and the magic system and kind of the general plot. But I would say like, not my not my perfect fantasy romance. You know, I'm someone who really loves that world building, who really likes history and lore that feels woven into the plot and kind of makes things a lot more grand and bigger than they are. I think though what we have with this book is a really fun romance and characters that you wanna root for and you wanna see this plot through and see how they're going to be able to achieve what their ultimate goal is. So that is what I'm liking about this book and that's kind of what I am taking from it and what I am excited about. That is kind of just my impression of the book thus far. As I said, I'm 40% of the way through We've had some training sequences. We have met some fun like side characters. I'm actually in the middle of like a very tense scene right now where they're gonna go meet up with the mother. Oh, also another thing that I'm liking about the book is the dynamic that Emmeline and Creon are presenting to the mother. She's hanging out with him for the time being and she's kind of like his plaything, so to speak. And that's fun because that does, it's like not fake dating, 
but like it is they have to put on a front that they're like into each other type of situation so I enjoy that I think it's a good time because it has a lot of forced proximity it has those elements of we have to present like we're super into each other in front of everyone even though behind closed doors we're like super awkward and don't really know how to uh, portray that but they're fighting feelings as well so I'm liking it I'm very curious to see where things are going to go I've heard this book has a pretty wild ending so I'm excited to see what that's going to be but yeah that's kind of the vibe for right now I'm enjoying myself and I'm curious to see where things are going to go so that is all I have to say for now I really want to finish this book today because I really want to get this vlog up tomorrow so that is the goal I have about three hours left of my audiobook so absolutely doable it is 2 30 right now so I think I will just spend the rest of the afternoon I've got to ship some pango books orders and that will be it so I'm gonna talk to you guys once I have finished Court of Blood and Bindings and give you my final thoughts hello friends so it is a few hours later and it is time for me to close out the vlog and give you my final thoughts on Court of Blood and Bindings, which I just finished about 20 minutes ago. I apologize for the lack of B-roll. I was literally just sitting around and reading today. I have nothing cute or interesting to show you. It was just me sitting there reading and you guys get enough of this mug throughout the vlog. Anyway, so let's talk about Court of Blood and Bindings. This is an interesting one. I enjoyed this book. I had fun reading it. Do you ever like have those experiences with books though, where it's like, hey, I liked my time with this. I don't think this book is gonna change my life. I don't necessarily feel like I need to go and recommend this book to everyone. You know, it didn't give me a super strong feeling one way or the other. It was just like a fine experience. That's kind of what this book ended up being for me. I thought that there were cute moments between our characters. As I said, this is definitely more of like a romance character driven story and not a lot of remarkable world building or like fantasy aspects, but I don't think it's like bad. It's one of those things where maybe I could see someone else giving this book like a four star or four and a half star rating. The ending was really cool. I really liked the ending. I thought that that was like, I like that for me was like, a highlight of the book for sure. I thought that it was twisty. I thought that it was fun. I think that the ending was a bit more creative and interesting than I thought maybe it might be. And so I was pleasantly surprised by that. But you know, when you just read a book and you're like, yeah, I liked that end of sentence. Like that's kind of how I feel about Court of Blood and Bindings. I thought it was fun. I don't think it is doing anything particularly like remarkable for a fantasy romance, not something that is going to shake me to my core, but I had fun. So I'm giving it three stars. Like I'm I'm not overwhelmed by it one way or the other. I am perfectly whelmed by this book. I am glad that I read that though. It was a nice like refresh after I finished The Stars Are Dying and it wasn't spectacular, but I think that it was definitely more enjoyable and a fun read. Like it was one of those a little bit more surface level fantasy romance and I don't mean that in an insulting way. Kind of just like a, a good time, a good time. We need that, right? We need a good time. So pick this up maybe, but if you don't like it, don't blame me because I only gave it three stars. So that's kind of gonna be my uh, super analytical and highly intelligent review of Court of Blood and Bindings. I liked it, three stars, it was cute. I'm gonna stop now. So let's do a little wrap up of the video. Obviously Court of Blood and Bindings, that was a three star read. It was an average fantasy romance for me. Before that, I read this little number. The stars are dying. I'm gonna give this two stars. This was very disappointing and truly the writing was just really a big miss for me and that is that. And then I had the pleasure of experiencing Heavenly Bodies by Imani Iru. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one that I think you guys should pick up. This is one of my favorite fantasy romances of the year. This is one of my favorite fantasy romances I've ever read. I think that it's really well done. It has all of the elements that really work for me in a fan row. So I think if you like similar books to me, if you feel like we have similar taste, you should pick this up because I think you'll have a really good time with it. It's fun. It's got some good plot lines. It has fun world building and a wonderful romance. So chef's kiss. I'm really, really glad that I read this. So that is going to be it for this installment of reading fantasy romances recommended by you beautiful people. Once again, thank you so much if you submitted a book for this video. It's really fun. I'm definitely going to continue doing this. So I will definitely ask you guys again, make sure you're following me on Instagram because that is where I am primarily going to be asking you guys for stuff like this. But if you made it to this point in the video, go ahead and leave the sun emoji and the moon emoji. Please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are both always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one.